When people today, especially in the media, talk about abortion, they try desperately to smear evangelicals as much as possible. And one way that they do this is by trying to claim that evangelicals were first for abortion, that they initially supported it. But what these smear merchants consistently do is completely ignore that many evangelicals reversed or changed their position after they had more time to closely study the issue. And a great example of this is well-known theologian and professor Bruce Waltke, who taught at the Dallas Theological Seminary, among other institutions, and former president of the Evangelical Theological Society. In November of 1968, Christianity Today published this issue right here about contraception and abortion. And the first article was by Waltke, and the most famous quote repeated over and over again is this one, God does not regard the fetus as a soul no matter how far gestation has progressed. The smear merchants take this and say, see, evangelicals didn't even believe that the unborn are human. However, what they constantly fail to point out is that Waltke himself, several years later, at the presidential address for the Theological Society in 1975 and also the following year published in their journal admitting that quote although I addressed myself to this problem several years ago I would like to contribute once again to the ongoing discussion because why what's the reason why because I have modified my position considerably since my earlier article the fetus is human and therefore to be accorded the same protection to life granted every other human being Fetocide is murder. The smear merchants will constantly cite from the 1968 article, but never from any updated articles. For example, appropriately titled Vice Media and Jezebel did this, Salon, and of course, CNN. The dumbest example comes from CNN as evangelical leaders formed common cause with Catholics, oh my, on topics like feminism and homosexuality, they began reinterpreting the Bible as teaching the Roman Catholic position on abortion. This is so dumb because Waltke himself was one of the leaders that changed his position. But of course, the author makes no attempt to explain the reason why. Notice that these liars never ever, they completely avoid explaining why abortion was illegal to begin with. Abortion had already been prosecuted as a crime in common law, with records going as far back as the 13th century. However, in the 19th century, due to the advances in technology that, number one, made surgery in general safer, and number two, due to the scientific discovery that life begins at conception, the physicians of the American Medical Association, directed by Dr. Horatio Storer, led the successful physician's crusade that resulted in abortion being prohibited by statutory law in every state of the union. Abortion was made illegal not because of Jerry Falwell and certainly not because of Catholics. In fact, the Catholic Church largely remained silent on abortion and some anti-abortion rhetoric expressed a strong anti-Catholic feeling. And Catholics generally were not even involved in legislative efforts to craft legal prohibitions of abortion. Abortion was made illegal legal not because of any religious reasons, physicians recognized the scientific fact that the unborn are living human children and it's wrong to kill children. This is not a religious issue. It's a social civil issue. However, in the following 70 to 100 years, an entire generation grew up with abortion being illegal and leading propagandists of the sexual revolution like Dr. Bernard Nathanson and Lawrence Later popped up and said, hey, these laws are too old and archaic and dangerous and we need, quote, reforms to save women. These pro-abortion radicals of the 1960s are on record openly admitting that they purposely tried to label being anti-abortion as a dogma of the Catholic hierarchy in order to frame this as a religious issue, not as a civil issue. And this is important for your notes. The evangelicals of the 1970s and also the conservative Catholics used the exact same arguments against abortion that were used by the American Medical Association of the 1960s. 
19th century. The unborn are living human children, and it's wrong to kill children. When the smear merchants today try to paint evangelicals as supportive of abortion, they also refuse to explain that in the late 1960s, many Protestants, definitely not all of them, but many Protestants, including many evangelicals, did support the softening or liberalizing of abortion laws. But key point, this is the key. This was not for abortion on demand. This was for limited medical or what was called therapeutic circumstances. As evidence, a national survey from 1966 was published here. Most Americans favor liberalization of abortion laws. Legal abortions for women whose health was seriously endangered were favored by how much? By a whopping 71%. However, if the reason was only because the mother did not want the children, the approval dropped to only 18 and 15 percent, depending on whether the woman was or was not married. The overwhelming majority of Americans did not want abortion on demand. Protestants tended to be more ready to permit legal abortions than Catholics, but, but the differences were relatively what? Relatively small. Do you want to know where this was published? The New York Times. Is this because the New York Times was owned by Jerry Falwell and James Dobson? I don't think so. The smear merchants of today, when talking about abortion history, constantly lie. It's just one constant distortion and slander and manipulation. Even Frank Schaefer cites this from CNN. And if Frank is citing you, that's almost a guarantee that it's completely detached from facts, history, and reality. And another really good example is Harold O.J. Brown, arguably the number one most influential evangelical voice in the early 1970s opposing abortion, four degrees from Harvard, an editor for Christianity Today who wrote multiple articles condemning abortion and a scathing rebuke of Roe versus Wade, who established the Christian Action Council in 1975 and who publicly attacked abortion for decades. These smear merchants today, they won't mention these facts or names or history because to do so would undermine their claim that killing little innocent children is a matter of freedom. Anyways, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.